Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode. I'm Tony and this is Hot Pilot. Uh, next to me I've got Al. Al and I got up this morning. We decided to fly in the wonderful smoke this morning. Uh, that is Alberta this time of the year. And uh, we are heading out for coffee. In today's episode we're going to take a look at the actual planning behind my Oshkosh trip. Two things that are going to be important to me that we'll look at as well is uh, my uh, crossing the border sticker. I've got to renew that. As well as the ability to cross back into Canada at the proper checkpoint. So stick around and uh, hope you enjoy it. So before we get going, it's important to understand that I have been to Oshkosh before. I've been there many, many times, so I'm familiar with the grounds, and that isn't a big concern for me this time around. I've camped at Camp Scholler, as well as stayed at hotels in the vicinity uh, of uh, Whitman Field, uh, as well as as far as uh, Appleton uh, up to the north. I think it's up to the north. Yes, it's up to the north. This year, we'll be camping under the wing, and I'll be bringing all my camping equipment for me to set up next to the airplane. If you haven't seen the last video, just check the link up there, and uh, you'll see all the equipment that I'm bringing with me. Also, in uh, the next uh, couple of videos, I'm going to be practicing some of the stuff that I have to do to get prepared for the Oshkosh. Basically, the landing part, and catching the numbers, and getting on that dot, because I, I want to try to get on the dot. Hey! This sounds like the right opportunity to ask you to subscribe to my channel in my French Quebecois I don't give a damn about stuff accent. Hello, maybe this is a good time to subscribe to the Odd Pilot channel. Uh, if you want, if you like, hit the thumbs up and uh, also hit the little bell for notification for future video. You know, if you want, I don't care. Alrighty then, let's continue. So there are quite a few things to prepare for on this trip. Uh, first of all, when I sit down and I take out my four flight, whether it be on the PC or on the uh, iPad, uh, I make all the original plans. And of course, I'm going to the States and I figured, hey, while I'm there, why don't I go see all these different places? So usually my flight looks as complicated as this. But then you do the math and realize how much money you're gonna spend on gas, so, we are going to focus on going from here in Alberta down to Oshkosh, Wisconsin and back. If I end up diverting along the way, you'll be the first to know because I plan on announcing it before I leave because there are a few spots in the States that I would also like to visit this year if possible. The general plan at this time is to go one of two routes from what we'll call the north side, which keeps me in Canada for the longest amount of time, and then crossing the states in the Midwest. The second way is what we'll call the south side, which has me crossing directly south of Alberta into the states and then head east towards Oshkosh. The idea behind this is that if I run into weather on the north side, I'll take the southern route. And if there's weather on the south side, I'll take the northern route. Overall, each route, whether it be the north side or the south side, will take me about seven hours of flight time, which translates about $90 an hour of fuel. So we're looking at $630 Canadian. And if you're flying to Oshkosh, the most important thing, of course, is the NOTAM, which can be downloaded off EAA's Air Venture site. And it's got all the information you need to fly out there. Now, the reason I am flying out and expecting to get there on the 20th is because that's the day that the NOTAM takes effect, which is Thursday. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's what it is because I'm planning this whole trip around it. The idea is, is that I want to experience the whole path, whether there are lots of planes or no planes, it doesn't matter to me. But the idea is, is that I want to experience the whole thing, the stuff that you find on YouTube videos. Speaking of which, they've got on their site uh, at uh, for Air Venture, they've got all the videos up that show you exactly all the different paths like the something bridge and the something thing and the thing thing green lake and the thing thing ripping and the thing thing fix a fisk <laughs> so make sure you take a look at those videos so the first thing i've got to do to be able to cross from canada to the united states is to have a sticker 
uh, on my plane that allows me to cross the border. I've already ordered that and I'm waiting for that to come in. Hopefully it'll come in in the next week or so. I'll provide the link to the DTOPS login below, but the easiest way is to just do a Google search. That'll prompt you to put in your user ID profile. In my case, I already had one and a password. The thing is, is if you haven't used it in a while, I think it's 90 days, they prompt you to create a, a new password for uh, that login. If you are a new user, you would hit the sign up button. You're presented with a screen that asks you for your old password and then changes the password for you and you can continue on where you can purchase your DTOPS decal. Now, in my particular case, it would be a renew of the decal. We identify the eligible aircraft to select it for. So in case someone's got multiple aircraft, you can pick which one you need to, to apply for. And then you just add it to the order like any Amazon order and uh, do the checkout. In EAA's flying in section, there's a very important document that you'll have to download. Along with lots of other information, we have a link to the FAA site so that we may download a special flight authorization document. Basically, hit the link for either amateur built or advanced ultralights to get the automatic authorization. Keep this with you at all times in the aircraft. The link to the FAA site is also in the description below. The other thing that I've done is I've applied for an aviation can pass um, certificate. <laughs> Basically what this does is it allows me to cross back at specific borders that normally uh, may or may not have uh, customs officers. So it's kind of like a nexus type thing for flying. The application form for the can pass private aircraft can be retrieved at the Canada Border Services Agency website. The link is in the description below. What's important to understand is that every single passenger in the airplane has to have the same application filled out. The application process is quite simple. There's a form called E672. It's a matter of opening up that form, filling it out, and then mailing it out to the appropriate Canadian Processing Center with your check for $40. This cannot be submitted online, unfortunately. So I have applied for it. The only problem that might happen is it says that it can take uh, up to six weeks and we're already at week number two and they're about four weeks at the time I'm making this video. They're about four weeks before Oshkosh. So I'm really not sure if I will get that in hand uh, so I can cross back at one of those uh, special uh, places. Otherwise, uh, I have to cross absolutely at specific uh, airports that only have customs available within certain times, let's just say nine to five. Okay, so we're done here. So let's go back and uh, say bye to Tony in the air with Al. Okay, so that wraps it up for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed what I just presented. Uh, we'll be continuing uh, from now all the way to Oshkosh to uh, produce other videos related to the journey as I get more information in and get closer to the trip. I'm trying to gather a bunch of people to meet up with in Oshkosh. So if you're one of those and you come from the Calgary area or anywhere else, uh, send me a message, hudpilot1 at gmail, or just uh, chat me down below. All right, so we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining us. Bye now.